Hi, I'm Jennifer, the Inquiring Quilter. Welcome to another episode of Intelligent Quilting, where you learn not just the whys, but the wherefores of various quilting techniques. Today we're going to be talking about half, making half square triangles eight at a time. So you're going to start off with two large squares of fabric, and you're going to end up with eight identical half square triangles. This is a great technique to employ in a lot of quilts, and so I think you're going to find it very helpful. Let me talk about the tools that you'll need for this technique. First of all, pins are always good every time you sew, although sometimes I don't use pins, but in this case you're going to be sewing four different lines across the diagonal of these squares, so pins that will keep those two Piece, those two squares of fabrics from shifting are a good idea. You'll need a rotary cutter, of course, and this method, just like the two at a time and four at a time method, you're making half square triangles that are bigger than they need to be, so you're going to be trimming them down. I like a uh, quilter select ruler because it's got this edge surface on the back, which keeps the ruler from sliding. I love that. And then, of course, a good rotary cutter. Optional, um, you may want to get one of these. It's a quilt in a day triangle square up ruler. Uh, they come in different sizes, so get the size you need for the half square triangles that you're trying to make. What's good about this ruler is it allows you to trim up your half square triangles with just two cuts instead of four cuts. So it does allow you to trim up your half square triangles in half the time. Something else that's you don't have to have, but it's really nice, especially for safety, is a turnstile kind of rotary mat. Um, it, it, it helps you, you're going to be trimming your half square triangles like this, and then you could turn it and trim like that, so you're not cutting across yourself. So a rotating cutting mat is really a good idea. Some other things that are really nice to have. Um, this diagonal seam tape is great. I'll show you in the sewing part of this video how you can use this and you won't have to mark your squares for sewing. Great time saver. But if you don't have the diagonal seam tape, uh, you will have to mark your squares. So what do I use for marking? I use, well, if it's a light fabric, I use a regular mechanical pencil. If it is a dark fabric, I use this. It's my sew line pencil. It's got white in it. Um, for marking, you can use a regular ruler like this. A short one's nice because it's a little bit more stable, especially if you're dealing with small squares. Um, but you can also use my favorite, which are these. Um, these are called quarter seam markers. Uh, they're by Fonz and Porter, and they come in a set with two sizes. We're going to need the longer ruler today, so I love the fact that it comes in uh, two sets. Now that we've learned what tools we're going to need, let's talk about the size square we need to cut. Before I get into the math involved in that, let me tell you that I have a free download that goes over the size squares you need to cut when using the two at a time, four at a time, and eight at a time half square triangle method. The link to that download is in the video description, so just look below and uh, click the link and visit my blog and download that cheat sheet for yourself. In the meantime, let me tell you how you compute the size squares that you need to cut. Let's say that I wanted to make half square triangles that finish at two inches. Well, I'm going to take the finish size, two inches, and add an inch to that, and then multiply that times two. So in this case, I'm going to take two plus one, and that's three inches, times two. And so I'm going to cut two squares that are six inches big. Again, the math is you take the finished size plus one inch times two. So I've cut my square six inches and I'm ready to go. Oh, by the way, when I'm marking, I, I like to use this. This is a sandboard. 
um, the other side. I don't think I've shown that. The other side is uh, something you can draw on if you need to, but uh, this side is um, a sandboard and it keeps your fabric from shifting around when you're marking it. So I've got my two squares. I'm going to mark on the back of the fabric. And I think I'll use this one because this one's a little busy and I might not see the lines that I'm drawing. So I'm going to use that. Again, the sand really keeps it from shifting. I'm going to take my quarter seam marker and I'll show you. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you would just take a ruler and you're going to draw a line from corner to corner. With the quarter seam marker, what I'm going to do is mark my sewing lines. So I take this yellow line that runs through the center of the quarter, the ruler, and place that yellow line exactly on my corner. And I'm going to mark on either side of it. That's one side. And then there. And there. So I've marked my sewing lines. Um, otherwise, you're marking a diagonal from corner to corner. And then you can also mark the sewing lines a quarter inch away from that if you want to. So I'm going to turn it the other direction and I'm going to repeat the process. Again, you can either mark a line from diagonal to diagonal or and then sew a quarter inch away from that. Or you can use this nifty tool to mark your sewing lines. And when you mark your sewing lines, that means you don't have to have that perfect quarter inch or anything. You're just sewing right on the line. So hey, it's pretty brainless. So now that I've marked my fabrics, I'm going to put right sides together. And then I'm going to pin so that nothing will shift while I'm sewing. I'm going to choose to pin in this area here because uh, that's not where I'm sewing and therefore I don't have to fiddle with removing pins as I'm sewing along. And I'm going to use uh, four pins. These pins, by the way, are really ultra fine and sharp and I love them for piecing. They really hold my fabric and help me uh, match seams and points. So again, I've got everything uh, marked. I've got my fabrics pinned, so I'm ready to go sew. So let's go do that. So I have my lines marked, got my fabrics pinned, and I'm ready to go. A couple of things before we start. I like to sew on and off a leader and an ender. That is a scrap of fabric. Sew onto it, and what that does is that allows the sewing machine a chance to adjust its tension so that when you start sewing on to your actual fabric, everything is great and, and in line and ready to go and you're not going to end up with a bird nest of, of threads right behind your, uh, on the back of your fabric. This is especially important whenever you're sewing onto something like a point kind of thing um, because it just, it takes the the feed dogs need something to grab onto, and so sewing onto a, a leader first, a little scrap of fabric, is a good idea. The other thing I like to do before I start is I want to lower my stitch length. That's because I happen to like to press my seams open, and with the stitch length lowered just a little bit, it makes those open seams just a bit stronger. I marked the sewing lines using my quarter inch seam marker uh, by Fonz and Porter and so I'm just sewing on the lines. I don't even have to pay attention to my quarter inch or anything else. I just have to sew, um, which is kind of uh, a little brainless. I love that. I'm going to sew onto the ender here and then I'm going to cut my Threads, turn it around, cut the leader off the front part of that, turn it around, and now I'm going to sew here. And by the way, I am sewing with high contrast threads so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I would not normally have chosen white thread uh, for these such dark fabrics, um, but I wanted to be able to see what I was doing. So. 
There you go, sewing on the line. I'm sewing on the line, sewing on the line, sewing on the line. Okay, coming to the end here. So, so on to a little scrap of fabric that we call the ender. So, leaders and enders. Now, I need to sew these other two lines, but before I do, let me show you a couple alternative methods what I call no mark methods. So we're gonna pretend that there aren't any marks here. And I'll show you how you can sew without a mark. I'm going to cheat and use this, this special tape. It's called Diagonal Seam Tape. It's by Cluck Cluck Sew, and I will have a link to it in the description of this video. Notice there is a red line and two black lines. They are a quarter inch away. So I need to put the red line in front of my needle and then these black lines will be my guides because they'll be a quarter inch away. So to make sure that I've got everything kind of straight on to the needle, I lay a ruler down and then I use a horizontal line on the ruler and I line it up with the horizontal edge of my needle plate. And that way I can make sure that if this is a right angle, then I'm straight on to the needle. So this is installed correctly. Now I'm ready to go. So let's pretend these lines aren't here. Um, how I use this is I'm going to put the point of my square and it's going to travel along the black line. And as you see, when it gets up to the needle, the sewing line is directly across from the needle. So that's how I'm going to guide this, um, even though I, I do have the lines marked. We're gonna pretend I don't. And that's how I could guide this And so, without having to mark, now how's that? I mean, that is just too flipping cool. Now, how do I keep this straight? Well, down at the bottom here, where you can't really see, right there, I am guiding the point of, the corner point of the squares along that black line. And that is what is allowing me to keep this straight on to the needle. See, I'm guiding right there. And that is causing me to sew one quarter inch away from the diagonal that runs from corner to corner. So let me sew off. Then I'll show you my second and personally favorite way of sewing these half square triangles without having to mark. But first I've got to get my laser installed. Okay, now I can remove the tape. Um, to line it up, I've lined it up the laser beam along the edge of my quarter inch foot and then also on this quarter inch mark down on my needle plate. Let me show you how my laser is attached. It's attached to the top of the sewing machine with Velcro, meaning I can take it off and on when I travel. There is a a switch on the side here that I can turn it on and off so I don't have to use the laser when I don't want to. But I will tell you that I like using this guy for a lot of things. Not just uh, the no mark method of half square triangles, but also flying geese when I'm making, uh, what is it, four at a time? The no waste flying geese. Uh, when I'm doing um, flip corners where you have a square and you're going to, you mark a diagonal and you're going to sew on that diagonal and then press it back towards the corner. That's I call that flip corners. Um, I use it for that. I don't mark that diagonal. I just use the laser beam to do it. I also use this um, when sewing straight lines for, you know, like a modern quilting. I want to do a bunch of straight lines. Um, this is awesome. I can set this anywhere I need to and, and measure a straight line a certain distance from the needle. So anyway, back to what we were doing. Um, now that I have my laser, I use it the exact same way that um, I used the line on the diagonal seam tape. So I'm going to run the point of my, the corner of my square, right up the laser, and then where it uh, meets the needle, it'll be a quarter inch away. And down at the bottom, like before, 
I am keeping that bottom point lined up. Oops. Um, with the laser so that I can sew the cordage way. There you go. Um, oops, let me sew on to a little. There, now I go. I'm just gonna go ahead and take these off. Now that we have our, I can take the pins out too. Now that we have our square all sewn, we're ready to cut it apart and press our half square triangles. So let me uh, meet you um, at the cutting table. Hi, I'm back from the sewing machine. I've got my uh, lines sewn. And again, I used a really high contrasting thread so you could see what I've done. Now we're going to set the seams first. Just press. What that does is it kind of pushes the, the threads into the fabric a little bit more. Makes your everything just a little bit stronger. So I'm going to move over here and cut and I, I need a ruler that will reach from corner to corner. So just uh, line up the edge of your ruler on those points and cut from corner to corner. Then rotate your mat and hopefully this doesn't move that much. And we're going to cut from corner to corner again. Okay, now let me put those back together. Okay, now I'm going to also make two more cuts. There you go. So I'm going to use the straight part of my ruler to cut through the center of this. I mean, I'm going to lay one of my lines along the squares there so I know that I'm cutting straight. Cut straight through the middle. Rotate one more time. This time I'm going to cut through the center over here. And again, that just has moved just a tiny bit. I want to cut through the centers there. Okay, so I've got my eight half square triangles. So let's uh, press some of them and I'll, we'll come back and um, trim them to size. Because I'm going to use a smaller ruler when I trim. So let me show you how I press. A lot of you press to the dark, that's great. Um, I recommend finger pressing that first. What that does is that helps that seam lie flat. And I'm gonna use also the point of my iron to press that seam over. Now I'm going to use the weight of the iron and my wool mat they're, the two are going to combine to get heat on top and heat radiating up back from the wool to really flatten that seam. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to flatten that side and really press it nice to flatten that. Then I'm going to finish off with this. This is my clapper. Um, the clapper is wood. It The wood can take the heat and radiate it back down, but also the heaviness of that wood is pressing that seam so that you get a nice flat uh, half square triangle. When I trim, I'm going to use the 45 degree line on my ruler. And I am trimming this to two and a half inches, but I'm not doing it all at once. I'm going to lay my that diagonal right here on the seam and I'm going to cut these two sides and then I'm going to cut it precisely to size when I make the second cuts. So first one, and then I'm going to rotate. 
I like to cut away from me. I think that's safer than cutting across. So I've cut these two sides. So now I'm going to turn it around. These are the two sides I just cut. So I'm going to place the two and a half inch mark right on that freshly cut side and that two and a half inch mark right down here and the 45 degree right there. That's important because you want this seam to be the center to run from corner to corner on your fini on your finished half square. Right? So you want to cut it that way. I cut those two remaining sides and voila, it is perfect two and a half inches and uh, ready to be sewn into a block. Now let me show you a method of trimming that will save you some time. So here we've got another one of our half square triangles. And before we press it, we are going to trim it using this, the Quilt in a Day Triangle Square Up Ruler. Notice that there's a bunch of lines. What I'm looking for is I want to trim this to two and a half inches. So I'm going to use this line here, the two and a half inch line. I'm going to take that line and I'm going to put it right on my seam. And I'm going to trim these two sides. So let's trim that side. And then let's trim that side. So you make two cuts, but you've trimmed four sides. And now when I press this, it's going to be a perfect two and a half inches. So let me show you another trick that I like to use. Well, not a trick, but it's how I actually press. I like to press my seams open. Now, you can press seams open by, as before, finger pressing. Just kind of gently open them, and finger press them like that. Then you take your iron, and by the way, I like to use it on cotton setting without any water, so no steam. That's so I can avoid situations where I might be accidentally pressing on the bias. In this case, you don't have to worry about the bias so much, but um, I just like to use it without steam. So I'm using, by the way, I'm using the point of my iron to help me press open that seam. And once it's open, I then uh, let the weight of the iron help flatten it a bit and also uh, the heat radiating back up from the wool pressing mat will really help flatten that seam. To finish it off, I'm going to uh, press it down with the um, clapper. And then I can repeat the process by pressing it on this side. I, I like to do that because I like my seams pretty flat. I think that um, helps my block be flat and square. So I take the time now to trim up my half square triangles to size, flatten my seams. Use that. And there you go. Nice and flat. One thing about this, the triangle, uh, trimming up this way is that you're going to end up with these dog ears. I don't know if you can see them, these little things, these little triangles that hang out. Let me show you how to get rid of those easily. So let's start again with another triangle. I'm going to use my quilted a day ruler. I'm going to put my two and a half inch line right on this seam and I'm going to make two cuts just like I did before. Okay, so now it's cut to size. But before I take it and press it, I'm going to cut those dog ears off. And how I do that is I turn it upside down, take my ruler, put the two and a half inch line back on the seam, and I'm going to use this center line to put that right on the point. And that tells me exactly where to trim those extra little triangles off. Those are the dog ears. So now when I press this open, this is going to be uh, without dog ears. Um, by the way, I like to press my seams open, and I most people don't have one of these, but I've got the rounded part of my clapper is covered in wool. And so that allows me to actually do my pressing on it 
and as you'll see, the roundness of, of this really helps to press my seams open rather naturally. And see how nice and flat that is? Take that down, flatten that on the ruler, on the, on the uh, wool pressing mat there. And then I'm gonna finish that off with my clapper. There you go. Another perfect half square triangle trimmed to size in half the time that it, the traditional method uses. And it uh, doesn't have dog ears and it's perfectly sized. And when it joins up with its little buddies over here, all these other, I have so many half square triangles now. Yay, I am just so happy. I uh, hope you are too. This is a really wonderful method to use. Uh, in making half square triangles. I, I like to use it, frankly, because it gets them done fast. Well, wasn't that easy? With two squares like this, we end up with eight half square triangles and quick as a wink. Uh, this method is very similar to the two at a time method, except, you know, you end up with more. So that is a very quick method to employ when you're trying to make a bunch of half square triangles like you might for any of these quilts behind me. I hope that you will continue to follow me or, well, if you haven't, make sure you click the follow button there and that will notify you the next time I put another tutorial up. Uh, in the meantime, I'll see you out there on the internet. Bye.